I'm so happy that you guys are all here. Um, we're going to get started on our special Valentine's Day edition of Plan Attack. And uh, <laughs> my, uh, my single ineptitude is uh, forcing me to put this big heart on the plan. So Philippines, Calgary, Albania, welcome you guys. So we chose this plan as a group um, in the vote. I'm just going to take the heart off so we can have a look at it. It is um, probably one of the worst plans that I have worked on. <laughs> it is a, uh, a 725 square foot or 67 square meter high rise apartment newly built in Chicago. And um, it is really terrible. It's one of the worst ones that um, we've had to work on. And I use this one in my reels. And I called it the beanbag plan primarily because it's almost impossible to furnish this living room. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So during the live show, what we're going to do, hi, everybody. Hello, Algeria. Hello, Argentina. Excellent. I'm so happy you guys are all here. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. So we're going to get started. And what we're going to do first is we are just going to talk about what some of the problems are with this design. If you've watched the reel, you've seen a few of them, but there's actually quite a few problems with this. So we're going to look close at it and then we're going to fix the plan. And this is going to be a really hard one to fix in terms of a difficulty scale. This is probably a nine out of 10. This is one of the most difficult ones to fix and make better, but I do have a strategy of how we're going to do it. So let's start out together and let's talk about what some of the design problems are. And I'm going to get going, but I want to see what you guys have to say. The tallest narrow ever. Yes, the hallway from the entry is one of the biggest problems of all. And I just want to measure it because I want people to understand the magnitude of this. It is 27 feet long, 27 feet long. So that is um, almost like eight meters. It's like incredibly long of a hallway for such a small apartment. That is really poor. And that has to do with the geometry of the building because there's another unit right here and then there's another unit right here. And because of the corridors, they've had to have this really long hallway. And that's not something we can fix, but we do have to try to make it better. We could have, sh they could have shortened it if you came into the unit right there. And that would have shortened it by 50% because that is only 12 feet long, which is 3.66 meters, and that would have cut the hallway in half, but they didn't do that. They decided to add the washer dryer and the kitchen to make it even longer. So let's talk about, yeah, it's like a tunnel. It is a terrible, it could be a gallery with lots of art, but I don't know, that seems like a lot of wasted space. So let's talk about what some of the other problems are. Entrance corridor connected directly to the bathroom, yes. So when you walk in the front door, you have a beautiful view of the shower and the toilet. So that is not a good thing at all. What else do we have? What else do we have? Entrances like a tunnel, yes. Um, so we've got some other issues in terms of the size. It's a cricket pitch, actually, the entrance lobby. Yes, it is a cricket pitch. It's also a bowling alley, but it's probably too long for a bowling alley. So eight meters is longer than my formal living room. Yeah, it's, it's terribly long. So the other issue is we have a real tight pinch point here when you enter to get into the unit. And the dishwasher and the sink, if you look carefully, they're kind of in the hallway. Like, look at this. They're actually kind of, the dishwasher for sure is in the hall. And the sink, when you're standing at the sink, you're basically kind of in the hall. Like you've got this really nice big unit and you're looking this way and looking this way and all the windows are behind you. And that is really unfortunate, I think, as a problem with this design. So that is an issue. And I also think the kitchen design itself is an issue. It's long and thin. And let's talk about where the furniture, somebody is saying door to master blocks ensuite. Yeah, there is a door collision here. Let's look at that. That is a good point that somebody has brought up. So this door here, when it's open, is going to block this door. So you can't actually, when this door is open, get into the bathroom. You have to actually close the door behind you in the bedroom to use the bathroom, which is very poor functional planning in terms of the door layout. Out, and I don't recommend that. So let's talk about the furniture because this is one of the biggest issues. In the kitchen, if you put the dining table here like this, how would you furnish the living room? Where would the TV go? I think you would probably put the TV here, right? That would probably make sense if the dining table went there. 
And then I guess, would you just, I guess you would put the couch like this, something like this, so it would just go kind of there. I mean, it makes absolutely no sense. There's absolutely no way to furnish this. This is why I said in the reel, the only way to furnish the living room is to use bean bags and throw pillows because your furniture is gonna have to look something like this and you could kind of lie around and vape, I guess, while you're watching TV. So it's kind of like a squatter's apartment. If you don't put the dining table there, I suppose what you could do is you could, you know, maybe put your, well, I guess maybe you would put it the other way. You could put a sofa like this and a chair here and you could put the TV here. And then where would you put the dining table? I guess you could put a round table kind of in the corner like that and two people could sit there. I mean, it makes zero sense. It's really, really poor in terms of the layout. Yeah, it's actually probably one of the worst plans ever. I wanna talk about the bedrooms too, because this is a problem. If you look at the master bedroom, the main bedroom, you're gonna have your bed something like this, right? That is gonna be where your bed is. And that's about the scale of a queen size bed. But I wanna talk about where would you put the bed in, in bedroom two. You really can't put a queen size bed in bedroom two because you don't have enough room at the end of the closet. So that is horrific. So it's called a bedroom, but it's only nine foot six by six foot nine. And six foot nine, basically seven feet, is only 2.13 meters. So that's not big enough really to fit a bed. You're going to have to put the bed, I think, sideways like this. That's how the bed would go in this room. And that is actually really bad. This is really too small of a bedroom. So there's all sorts of problems here. And we have our work cut out for us in terms of fixing it. And I just want to talk about this in terms of how we're gonna fix it. I'm gonna clear everything out. I want you to have a look at this. It looks better already, doesn't it? But we have some real challenges because we have some structure and some ducting or some structural elements that we can't remove. If you look at the original plan, there is a thickened area here. There's also a thickened area here and here. I'm assuming I can take this away because that is probably a plumbing stack and I can take this away because that is a plumbing stack as well. So I'm imagining that I'm starting this from scratch before the building is built and the developers come to me and said, do a better layout, okay? So let's have a look at this. So that is what we've got in terms of the square footage. And it looks better already. Do you guys think this looks better? Somebody is saying, are two bedrooms a must? Well, we're gonna try to put back two bedrooms in this space because that is actually how they have marketed this. And the developer, from a marketing point of view, is gonna want to sell this unit as a two bedroom unit. So we may not be able to get the same layout that we had before, but we're gonna try. And I think that is actually a very good segue to start out about how I would approach this in terms of designing this layout, okay? Because the biggest challenge we've got is the bedrooms. And this is the size of a bedroom. This is 10 by 10, so 10 feet by 10 feet, which is three meters by three meters. That is kind of the minimum size of a bedroom and I want to talk about this because this is really important in that other unit they had one bedroom here and they had the second bedroom here and that was the problem because when you stack the bedrooms if we look at this and I'm just going to draw the other one in here just so we've got both of them drawn in together because if you stack the bedrooms and you do another one up like this this is exactly how they did it that's how they did it. The problem with that was, is we ended up with this weird space this way. This ended up being a really weird shape of a space. And that is where everything got off track. So we know the bedrooms have to go against the windows, right? I think adding a storage area in the storage would be a nice perpendicular to the left wall. Okay, we'll come, we'll come back to that in just a sec. But we, we know that that is not a good idea in terms of the bedrooms. So where else could we put the bedrooms? We can't do that. That would be perfect, wouldn't it? It would be awesome. The problem is, is that this one doesn't have a window. So that is a problem. So we can't do that. We know we can't do that. So that doesn't work. We know that doesn't work. What other strategy do we have left over? Well, can we do this? Could we fit the bedrooms there? Would that work? Does that work? Well, it's interesting because if we do that, if we do fit the bedrooms in that area, what we end up with is we end up with one big space that could be living, dining, kitchen. And the shape of that looks better than what we had before. Because remember before our living, dining, kitchen shape is this. 
And that is not functional. We can't function with that shape in terms of furniture. So if we move ahead and we put the bedrooms next to each other, we end up with one big space. Now someone is saying, could you put the top left beside the old bathroom and one, uh, the one on the bottom right again? Okay, could you split the bedrooms? Okay, well, let's look at that. Let's explore that idea. So we can put one, I'm just gonna draw on top of this again, just as an idea here. We could put, I'm just gonna move this down just so I can sketch the new bedroom idea that was just presented to me. So if we do one bedroom here, so someone is suggesting one here, and keep that as the bathroom, and then do one on the bottom left, one on the bottom right. That doesn't work because we don't have room to get in and then we've got kind of a crazy space. So I don't think that actually works. I think the bedrooms have to go next to each other in this unit, but I think it's important to be able to explore all the ideas because if you can explore the ideas, you can rule certain things out. And that's how I design is I always do it by ruling things out. So let's have a look at this again, okay? So someone is saying, but there is a column inside the second room. Yes, there is, good point. There is a column in that room. And we're gonna evaluate that as we go through because we can't change this column. But I think the choice of having this as a bedroom space with that column is better than doing this because we end up with a ruined space for everything else. So I am making a decision that we're gonna keep the bedrooms here and we are gonna have to work with that column. We're gonna try to do that, yes. The ducting could all mess it up. Yes, this is a problem, but we can't change it. But I'm gonna show you how we're gonna work around it, okay? So I take back what I said. <laughs> I No, don't take back what you said. It's important to explore ideas. So let's talk about the bathrooms, all right? This is a bathroom size in an apartment. So we know that one bathroom will most likely go here. Where should we put the other bathroom? So we're gonna have, obviously, one bathroom is gonna go up here in this section. Where should we put the other bathroom? There's kind of a couple options. Should we put the second bathroom here? So basically what I'm suggesting is we're gonna have one bathroom here. So that would probably be the ensuite for this bedroom. Should the second bathroom go here? Or should we maybe put the second bathroom maybe here? What would be a better idea? I'm gonna say A or B in terms of where should the second bathroom go? Somebody's saying bottom right. You could put it down at the bottom right. If you put it down at the bottom right, is that an issue? It could be because to use the bathroom, you'd have to walk through the living space. And that may not be the best idea in terms of the layout. We do have to put two bathrooms back. A, 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 A. Wow, lots of people are saying A. Excellent, lots of people are saying A. B, someone's saying B. Interesting, if you choose A, what is the downside of A? I mean, the benefit of it is that you get a really big space, but you have that access issue with walking through the space to get to it. So you're kind of in one area, you're kind of making a, a benefit, but in another area, you're kind of having a problem. What if we do, do the second bathroom attaching it to the column in the second room? Well, that's an interesting idea. So let's talk about that a little bit. What if the second bathroom moved up a little bit and we did A and B? The problem with that is our room size is now really small because taking the column, so that is now like seven feet, which is you know two meters by eight. So that makes that room extremely small. So I'm not sure I recommend that. C, between A and B, somebody's saying C, you could put it here. You could put it there, but I wanna just talk about that as well, because this is all really interesting discussion points. So we know we're gonna have one bathroom here. We know that that's a given. But the other point is if we put it in between, if we have one bathroom here, we have a kind of odd space. We have a kind of strange shape for the living, dining, and kitchen area. It's kind of like a C shape, and that's gonna be hard to work with. So what I'm gonna suggest, and we're gonna try a few different options because we're gonna try different things. I'm gonna suggest one bathroom goes here, and I am gonna suggest that we scooch this up a little bit and put the other bathroom here, okay? So this is interesting. We're gonna just try it. We may not have success with it, but we're gonna try it, and we're gonna see what we can come up with. So this is what I have done as my uh, initial kind of layout. And it's interesting, it's not perfect, but it's interesting. 
So I have made the entry closet here. I put one access into the main bedroom here, and I'm gonna have the bathroom and the closet, and then the second access for the laundry and the second, ba the bathroom, the second bathroom and the bedroom here.